Merci. We've got a flower on the altar today. It's in honor of Berkeley Bruce Stavig, <coughs> daughter of Maggie and Randy, and little sister to Addie and Timley. She was born on October 21st, weighed six pounds, 10 ounces, 19 inches long. Congratulations to you all. Fall Carnival is tonight from 4 to 6 p.m. in the north parking lot on the corner of 6th and Quinn. Bring your children dressed in their costumes for some games, hot dogs, and lots of candy. If you would like to help, just show up and we'll find you a spot. We'll also be setting up for it at 2 p.m. today if you'd rather help with that. UMW will meet Tuesday at 10 a.m. in the archives room. All ladies of the church, whether a member or not, are invited to attend. Coffee Memorial Blood Drive will take place this Thursday from 12 to 6.30 p.m. in our FEC. Local Missions Work Day will take place this Saturday at 8 a.m. You meet in the church's north parking lot. This is a wonderful way to be the hands and feet of Jesus for our community, and no special skills are needed. I think Fred even buys donuts. So. <laughs> Veterans Day Sunday, to celebrate this year, we would love to fill the sanctuary with photos of veterans from the past and present. If you have someone you would like to honor in this way, bring a framed photo of them to the church no later than this Thursday. We'll display them next Sunday, November 7th, and you may pick them up following that, uh, on that following Monday. Ladies Bible study is Wednesdays at 6 p.m., Thursdays at 10 a.m., both in the fellowship hall. Methodist Men's Breakfast it is held every Wednesday morning from 6.30 to 7.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Yep, yep. Invite a friend and join us for good food, fellowship, and devotion. Yes. Early Watch Prayer Group Woo. meets for fellowship, worship, and intercession Monday through Saturday mornings, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. in the chapel. Come and join them when you can. Pastor Dave encourages everyone to enjoy a quiet time with God each day. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. And now if you'll join me in our call to worship. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for the amazing gifts of life, liberty, and redemption, and the pursuit of holiness. We are a joyful and grateful people of God. Blessings and give you thanks for all your kindness generosity and grace and goodness continue to flow through to us through us so your will is done and your kingdom comes here in heaven as it is in heaven we thank you for our mothers who chose to keep us birth us raise us and love us we are a joyful and grateful people O god we count our blessings and give you thanks for all your kindness and generosity. Grace and goodness continue to flow into us. So your will is done and your kingdom comes, kingdom, as it is in heaven. We thank you for our fathers who protected us, provided for us, and taught us countless life skills so we could succeed as adults. We are a joyful and grateful people, O oh God. We count our blessings and give you thanks for all your kindness and generosity. Your grace and goodness continue to flow through us. So your will is done, and your kingdom comes here in Ghana as it is in heaven. We thank you for Jesus, your beloved Son, who became one of us, experienced our human struggle and brokenness, and who offered himself as a sacrifice for our sins. We are a grateful people of God. We count our blessings and give you thanks for all your kindness and generosity. May your grace and goodness continue to flow into us and through us. So your will is done, and your kingdom comes here in time as it is in heaven. 
We thank you for spiritual new birth made possible through saving faith in Christ, made possible because of your amazing grace. Almighty God, you have showered our lives with love and goodness. We place our trust in the atoning death of Jesus, your only begotten Son, and choose to live joyfully, gratefully, and generously as your redeemed sons and daughters. Amen. I don't know if this mic is working. Thank you, Tom. You got it going. Let's all stand as we sing. I stand amazed in the presence. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. seated. It is a great joy to see you all with us in worship this morning on this last day of October. Culturally, we celebrate it as Halloween. Biblically, And in the church tradition, we celebrate it as All Saints Day, as we remember all of those who have gone before us. We read in Hebrews, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, all those who have died in faith in relationship with Christ, 
are a part of a spiritual family, a great cloud of witnesses. And on this day especially, we are mindful of all of those who have gone before us. So we honor them, your own family, those you've known in the church as you were growing up, and even further back, we remember Peter, James, and John. We remember the apostle Paul. We remember John Wesley and, and John Calvin and thousands upon thousands who have known Christ and served Christ in ages past. Our theme today is the theme of being born from above. Most of us know that scripture out of John chapter 3 as being born again. And we know what that means. But one of the more accurate translations would be to be born from above. Both can be used. The way that Greek word is used, it can mean being born again. And of course, Nicodemus understood that. We'll read that in just a little while. How can someone be born again? Go back to their mother's womb and be born again? Uh -uh. Jesus said, no, that's not what I mean. I'm talking about spiritual birth, being born from above. So with that in mind, let's share our prayer together. Beloved Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life, physical, emotional, and spiritual. How precious it is to be wanted, loved, and supported by you and by our circle of family and friends. There is so much about mortal life on this planet that we cherish and appreciate. Thank you for every good and perfect gift that you send our way. We are especially grateful for your constant help, provision, and healing during times of illness, loss, and hardship. We also want to thank you today for eternal life. This is only made available to us through the courageous death of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ. We honor him for his servanthood and atoning death, choosing to place our hope, faith, and love in him. Thank you for the joy of sins forgiven, having our names written in the Lamb's book of life, and filling us with your Holy Spirit. We rejoice in being born from above. Amen. If the ushers will come forward, we'll receive tithe, offering, and faith promise gifts. Today is also our noisy offering for missions. I had such a busy schedule in the 8.30 service that I plumb forgot to take up the noisy offering, we had to do it at the close of the service. So I'm reminding myself with these noisy offering buckets in front of me so that I don't forget it. Kim? Sai? Casey? Arnie? Our uh, stewardship reflection today comes out of Luke chapter 6, verse 38. This is... Jesus instructing his disciples, give and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Let us pray together. Lord, what a privilege it is to gather for worship today. Thank you for all of those saints who have gone before us, especially those we knew personally, those who prayed for us, those who were good examples, Sunday school teachers who taught us and friends along the way who encouraged us. And Lord, as we come now to give, we remember that everything we have is a gift from your hands. The money we have, the food we enjoy, the clothes we wear. You are the giver of every good gift. And as we return to you your tithe, as we give of our love offering, as we invest into evangelism, we pray that you'll bless the gift and the giver. And Lord, that we'll use everything you give us to proclaim the good news that Jesus loves each of us and he wants desperately to save us. It's in his name we pray. 
And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if anybody's got an offering waiting for you there, Kim. <laughs> You're doing good. Could I stand about here? The things of this world that are dear to my heart, they just borrowed, they're not mine at all. Jesus, only let me use them to brighten my way. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord. Roll back the curtain of memory now and then. Show me where you brought me from, where I could have been. Remember, I'm human and humans forget. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord. Nothing good have I done to deserve God's own son. I'm not worthy of the nail prints in his hands. But he chose the road to Calvary to die in my stead. Why he loves me, I can't understand. Roll back the curtain of memory now and then show me where you brought me from where i could have been remember i'm human and humans forget so remind me remind me dear lord roll back the curtain of memory now and then show brought me from where I could have been. Remember, I'm human and humans forget. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord. Let's stand together and do our doxology. Just go up a little, maybe. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and be seated.
whiskers of God's goodness, we lie down to rest our souls. From the waters of God's mercy, we drink deeply, are made whole. At the table of God's presence, all the saints are richly with the oil of God's anointing into service, we are led. We are led. We are led. We are led. Come and cheer. for missions today. Come on, kiddos. Go, Oakley. When you get some coins, shake that bucket. Let's hear the noise. Go, Fang. Barrett. Hudson. Marshall. Eva. Go, Wyatt. Eyes are coming, sir. Eyes are coming. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Mm hmm. While the kids are taking up the offering, I might remind you that there's a student in Uganda that we're supporting in uh, her college education, as well as the school in Nakalundaland with the elementary age kids, over 300 of them. And we've also been supporting the building of a mission hospital that will care for people that don't have access to medical and it's already roof height and got the roof being put on it. So uh, they're building by faith as the money comes in. Dr. Franklin was here, shared the need, and uh, the Lord has opened up some opportunities to uh, get started. Good job, Marshall. And we also support Sister E. France and the mission out there to the remote areas that do clinics as well as help support the local communities in their faith and development. Thank you, Hudson. Beautiful job. You can go put it right down there, right next to the altar, and then come and sit here. Good job, Wyatt. Thank you, boy. 
Good job. There comes the real McCoy. Thank you, my friend. Good, you got a you got a good offering. Grab a seat. Yeah, you go, Wyatt. Marshall. Mm-hmm. Good job. So I just want to say on behalf of each child, each family that we're helping, you are being the hands and feet and the heart of Christ to them, even though most of them you haven't met personally. Sister E. France has come to our church. She joined us in early watch prayer. Uh, Franklin has come um, and visited and presented. But many of them you haven't met. But thank you for loving and serving in the name of Christ. Today we're going to talk a little bit about being born from above. And sometimes you might hear people say, uh, where is God? And you'll say, he lives in, where does God live? Anybody? Yeah, McCoy, he lives? He lives up in the earth. Uh, he lives up there, up there somewhere. He lives up in heaven. We often say he lives up there. And when I was your age, I used to think, I wonder where up there is. Maybe like if you go to a mountain, like if you go to the top of Mount Everest, real high is that, is that where God lives, way up in the mountains? Or is it even higher up in the air? Or when I became a bit older and I knew about outer space, I thought, maybe God lives out there in outer space somewhere. But I don't think when we say up there or up above, I don't think it's a place up there. I think it's another place different to the earth. And the word we use for that is dimension. We're living in this dimension, this reality here on earth. But there's another dimension, another reality that Jesus calls heaven. That he has come from heaven. And I, th I think heaven is as close as the person sitting next to you. You see McCoy and Marshall are close. I believe God is as close to you as the person that's sitting next to you. Now we can't see him, but God is real and he's everywhere present. And so when Jesus says you must be born from above, it's talking about that place where God is present all the time and he's present with your life and mine. And he wants to make sure that you don't just live this life on the planet, things you can see and hear and taste and smell and feel, but that you become spiritually alive. Heaven is about a spiritual life and we're going to talk about that. God wants to make sure Wyatt and Oakley and Faith and every one of us have a spiritual life. And that requires you and me to be born from above, to be born by God. God's got to do something special for us. And I've lost you boys. Let us pray. <laughs> Lord, I'm so glad you're not way up there somewhere on Mount Everest or up there in the sky or uh, outer space, but you're right here with us. Even though we can't see you with our eyes, you are here. And Jesus speaks of that place as being born from above or being born out of heaven, out of God's love and God's presence. And I pray that each of us will become spiritually alive, not just alive on the planet, not just living this physical life, but inside of us, that spirit life would come alive to you. We prayed in Jesus' name and everybody said? Amen. There'll be candy for you, not that you need any more candy. I'm sure you've all got a bag full already. And I'm sure that by the end of today, you're going to have another bag full. And I know that the dentists are going, <whistles> I'm going to be seeing a lot of kiddos coming for teeth cleaning, maybe for a filling, maybe even for an extraction. Ah! So you better brush your teeth if you know what's good for you. All righty. Our prayer for illumination, if you'll join me. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy 
and obey with gladness what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture today is familiar, coming out of the third chapter of John. In fact, one of the most well-known verses is found in John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We're going to read this whole passage together. Now there was a Pharisee, and when we talk about Pharisees, we're talking about people who wanted to know God, who studied very hard, they were very committed, many of them were well educated, these were some serious folks who were trying to please God. There was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council, and I must pause there, to be a part of the Jewish Ruling council is like being the mayor. Today, Kim is with us. Kim Peterson, he's our local mayor. But this is even more than a local mayor. Part of the ruling group ruled the whole nation, governed the whole nation of Israel. So it would be kind of like a governor, a governor of Oklahoma, if you will. So he's an important man. He's a leader. He's very religious. He's very serious, well-educated. He came to Jesus at night. I must pause there. Some have said maybe he was so busy with all his business during the day, he didn't have much time, so he took personal time at night to go and visit with Jesus, made an appointment after working hours. Some others have said there was mixed reviews about Jesus. Some people didn't like him. He was politically undesirable. So maybe Nicodemus decided, I'd better see him at night because I don't want everybody to know I'm actually going to go and visit with him and I might even believe that he's somebody special. So Nicodemus goes to see Jesus at night. He says to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, leader, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. So I must ask you as you sit there, what signs do you think Nicodemus is talking about? What could have happened already in these early maybe weeks or months of the ministry of Jesus? Think about that for a minute. His first miracle was turning water into wine. Maybe Nicodemus had heard about that. Maybe he was even at the wedding. I don't know. Maybe he's seen or heard about healings that Jesus has performed, that Jesus casts demons out of people, that Jesus is able to feed people with very few provisions. A miracle of abundance happened. So Nicodemus is very impressed with these God signs. They are convincing at least to Nicodemus, that Jesus must be at least a prophet or a man of God. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now I must pause there. This is a strange reply that Jesus gives Nicodemus. Nicodemus is honoring him. He's telling him he's impressed with what he's doing. Jesus doesn't say, well... Thanks. Thanks, Nicodemus. I appreciate that affirmation. Yep, I am from God. You got that right. What is it I can help you with? He doesn't say those things. He jumps right into a very personal part of Nicodemus's life. Nicodemus is a teacher. He's a spiritual leader. He's influential. And now Jesus starts talking to him about being born again or being born from above. How can someone be born when they are old? Well, if you think of that translation, and it's a translation from the Greek, and Nicodemus would have been familiar with the Greek, well-educated, the word Jesus uses could have been born again. He says, how can you get born again if you're old? Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. 
Jesus answers, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Two different realities, a mortal reality, an earthly reality, and a spiritual reality or a heavenly reality. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Maybe Nicodemus is asking himself, well, what's all this talk about being born again or being born from above, being spiritually born? How can this be? Nicodemus asked. Now Jesus says to him, you are Israel's teacher. You are responsible for the nation. You are a spiritual guide. And do not understand these things. Why is Jesus so incredulous? Because being born from above is the ABC of spiritual life. This is where you start. This is what it means to get to know God. This is what it means to follow God, to be born from above, to have a spiritual birth. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify of what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. Is Jesus talking about Nicodemus here? That you somehow don't really believe some of the things I've been teaching? Or is he just talking in general? You people, you Pharisees, you leaders, you Jewish people in general don't believe the testimony that I'm sharing with you. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? Our children's moment, another dimension, heavenly other than earthly. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. That is a term Jesus uses for himself, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Remember when the people rebelled, the snakes broke out, the venom was deadly and God instructed them to make an image of a snake and lift it up on a pole and if you looked at it you would be healed and now Jesus is just like that the son of man will be lifted up and those who look at him who believe in him will have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life for God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. That's language of the courtroom. The verdict has been announced or proclaimed you either stand condemned because you have not received God's son or you stand pardoned the verdict has been announced all who believe in the son have life have been forgiven this is the verdict light has come into the world but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. Is that not true? When we're up to no good, we duck and dive and hide and we don't want anybody to know. I was reminded of a moment in my life when I had stolen a candy bar as a young boy, put it in my pocket without paying for it, and the storekeeper had noticed. I didn't know. And he came up to me and he said, son, 
What have you got in your pocket? Ooh, all of a sudden, my face was red. And he said, take it out. And I took it out. And boy, he gave me a stern talking to. You do not steal. That is not right. He did not call the police, but he put the fear of God in me. And I left there with a sense of shame and guilt. None of us like to be exposed when we're up to no good. We don't want the light shone on us. We want to hide in the darkness. But whoever lives in the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. This is the word of the Lord. A couple of questions for you to think about this morning as we examine this passage together and as we dig deeper into this idea of being born from above. Just what does being born from above mean to you? If Jesus says it makes all the difference between being right with God or being condemned, then what you think about being born again or being born from above and how you've experienced it can be life-changing, life-giving, or it can mean eternal condemnation. Number two, how do we experience being born from above? How does that happen? What does it take for you and me to become spiritually alive, to live this heavenly life even while on the planet, to be connected to God spiritually? And then number three, what does it require to grow into a mature and healthy believer? If this new birth is anything like our first birth, when you are born, you're just a little bitty baby, an infant, helpless. How do you grow from being a little infant into a mature, healthy, and strong believer? These are important questions for each of us to be able to answer. This conversation with Nicodemus is fascinating because Jesus isn't tracking in the way a normal conversation would go, especially with somebody you don't really know. There aren't just pleasantries. There isn't just like a superficial, well, how's the weather? And I'm glad you're impressed with me. And uh, let me tell you a few more things that have happened since you maybe heard or saw me last. No, Jesus jumps right into the heart of spiritual life. And especially in a very personal way in Nicodemus's life. You and I have got to understand that Nicodemus comes as somebody that is exceptional among his peers. Very committed, very studious, very educated, very capable. He's the cream of the crop, the creme de la creme, right on the top. And all of a sudden, he's seen or heard things about Jesus that have impressed him, that have touched him. And in some ways, he's supportive. I've come to validate, I've come to say, I think maybe you're the real deal. I like what I see. I'd like to know more. And Jesus jumps right into this being born from above issue. And not just in general, but in a very personal way. Because he's going to challenge Nicodemus. You are a leader. You are a spiritual guide, but you're not leading very well. And you're not very knowledgeable about what it means to know God and connect with God and help others to do the same. Jesus is going to focus on the ABCs of spiritual life. And for him, it starts with being born from above. And Nicodemus classically misunderstands what Jesus is saying by saying, you mean I've got to go back and be born like that again? And he says, uh, no. No, born from above, born from heaven. You've got to have God at work in your life that will change who you are, that will move you from being condemned to being pardoned will move you out of the darkness into the light, will take you from sure death, 
The soul that sins, it will surely die. That's the scripture. And I'm sure Nicodemus is familiar with the scripture. There's a way that seems right to us, but the end thereof is death. Jesus is going to say, I'm going to talk to you about death and life, and not just life on the planet, but eternal life. And then he starts talking about the mystery of this all. It's like the wind. You feel it, you see its effects, but you don't know where it comes from, and you're not sure where it's going. You see, one of the dangers for all of us is to become a little prideful, a little maybe arrogant about who you are and what you are and what you've done and what you know. But unless you and I know God in a very personal way, all of that doesn't count for eternity. So if Jesus was being pleasant, William, he might have said, Nicodemus, I'm glad you're well educated. Good job. Nicodemus, I'm glad you've been recognized as a leader. Good job. Proud of you. Nicodemus, I'm really pleased with your commitment, your earnestness. Good job. However, all of those things are not enough. You've got to learn to know God personally. You've got to be born from above. There's got to be a spiritual birth. You've been born on the planet. You've been born of flesh, but you are not born spiritually. And in order for you to be the leader God wants you to be, that's got to happen. And then you've got to tell others how they can have that, how they can really connect with God, how they can grow in God, how they can become the men and women God wants them to become. And I must say to you that how that happens is mysterious. I have known many people in the last 40 years that have met with God and been wonderfully changed. And I can't explain why that saving faith connects and why God becomes real and how instantaneously they have that assurance that their sins have been forgiven and that they are now a part of the family of God. That they can say with confidence, I'm born again. And I know others who have heard the message, who have been in worship, who have been raised in a Christian family, but it hasn't happened for them. It's like the wind, folks. There's a part of this God relationship that is mysterious. You and I do not control it. You and I do not have it all figured out. No matter how educated we are, no matter how many times we might have read our way through the Bible, all of that is not enough. God has got to step in and touch us and change us and make something like a birth happen in our lives. And I like this image of birth because there's intentionality in carrying a child and birthing a child. It doesn't just happen. It's not just an accident. When a woman knows she's pregnant, especially today, she's got a choice to make. Do I keep this baby or not? Am I going to carry this baby? And we know many choose not to. And those who choose to carry that baby protect that life while it's growing inside. And then there's not a woman among us who's had a baby, who's birthed a baby that doesn't know the pain and the wonder of that experience. It's a stake in the ground. And I think it's exactly the same for being born again, a spiritual birth. As God starts working in your life and mine, as God starts convincing us that we're in trouble, that our lives are not right with Him, as we carry that conviction of sin, the pain of it, and then when we finally get to that moment of surrender and we ask God to forgive us and He births us out of the darkness into the light, out of our brokenness into His saving grace, as He reassures us that we are forgiven and that we now are new creatures. It's as powerful and as traumatic as being in the womb and now being ushered onto the planet and breathing on your own. I don't know how he did it, but I know that he did it. Somebody has said it this way, I know that I know that I know that I'm born again, that I'm saved, that I'm right with God. And you know the truth is, 
You didn't do anything to deserve it. In the same way that your mom chose you and loved you and carried you and birthed you and did all those things before you did anything for them, before you could smile, before you could give them a kiss back, before you could put an arm around them and hug them, they were doing that for you and me. And so it is with God. We believe in a grace that He showered upon us long before we know anything, before we respond in any way to God. God is drawing us. God is loving us. God is helping us figure out how to be a part of His family, how to come alive spiritually. Isaiah says our sins have separated us from God. They've built a wall that we are dead in our trespasses and sins. But God loves us too much to leave us that way. He sees the darkness. He sees the separation. He sees the brokenness. And so He sends us His Spirit. And His Spirit, like a midwife, helps us experience spiritual birth, being born from heaven, being born from God Himself. And when it happens, something wonderfully new, something wonderfully exciting happens in your life and mine. In the hymn that we looked at last week, I was lost and now I'm found. I was blind and now I see. I was dead and now I'm alive. This is what Jesus is talking about and he's talking about the ABCs of spiritual life. And he's speaking to one of the foremost leaders and teachers in Israel. Now, what is exciting about this conversation is we believe Nicodemus takes these things to heart. Jesus says, if you do not believe in the Son of Man, you're going to be condemned. That's the verdict. But if you do believe, you'll be saved because God sent the Son to save the world, not to condemn the world. And we know that later on, when they're trying to trump up charges against Jesus, Nicodemus is the one who stands up and says, now, wait a minute. Do we condemn somebody without a fair trial before we've heard all the information? And it's very unpopular at that stage for him to stand up and speak on behalf of Jesus because the whole group almost to a man is against him. But Nicodemus is the voice of the minority. I think the voice of a believer. And later on when they kill him, he's one of those who helps take the body down and puts the the spices on the body and puts it in that borrowed tomb. Nicodemus is sticking his neck out for Jesus. You know why? Because I think after this conversation, something changed. He didn't come to be changed. He came just to check Jesus out. He came just to tell him that, hmm, I'm kind of impressed with you. And before he knew it, Jesus was in a deep, life-changing conversation with Nicodemus. And I must pause there. You are too. I am too. Each one of us. It's important what you think of Jesus. It's important that you believe He is who He is, but that's not enough. When all of that is laid on the table, then Jesus is going to look at you and He's going to look at me and He's going to say, now, let's talk a little bit about being born from above. Has that happened? Is that real in your life? Have you come to that place of conviction and convincing and awakening? Have you let the grace of God have full effect in your life? Have you allowed it to break your heart and soften you to the point of you crying out and saying, save me? Because if you have, then you are spiritually alive. You have been born from above. You must have both, born of flesh, born of the water, born of the Spirit, born of God. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came that each of us would have the opportunity to be born from above, to be able to live a heavenly life while right here on the planet. I've got good news for you. If you're born from above, this is as close to hell as you're going to get right here on this planet. Yeah, you might get a little taste once in a while. Life can get hard, yeah, but it's not going to get any worse than right here. But if you are not born from above, then this is as close to heaven as you're going to get. Those who choose to reject stand condemned already. 
because they have not believed, they have not received the gift of God's one and only Son. That judgment has been proclaimed on us by our own choices. But the heart of God is made plain in this chapter. For God loves this world and everybody in it, and He wants the world to be saved. He did not send His Son to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. So preacher, are you telling us that God wants everybody saved? Yes. Are you telling us that God's standing ready to help me have a spiritual birth? Yes. Are you telling me that I need to be sure that I know that I know that I know that it's real? Yes. For heaven's sake, yes. Don't guess. Don't delay. This is the day of salvation. Receive the gift that cost Jesus everything to achieve. Like the serpent that was raised up in the desert to save the people, the Son of God will be raised up on a cross. He will hang there, he will bleed, he will die, and he will say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. In order that you and I might be born again, born from above, that we might know Jesus Christ, whom to know is life and life everlasting. Preacher, can you explain it all to me? No, I can't. It's a bit like the wind. I see the leaves rustling. I feel the breeze on my face, but I can't figure it all out. I don't know how it all works, but I know that it works. Why? Because it's worked for me, and I've seen it work for hundreds, even thousands in the 40 years that I've walked with Christ. It makes the difference between eternal life and eternal judgment. It makes the difference between the light of God and the darkness of our own sin and brokenness. It makes the difference of living in brokenness and bondage and being free and new the way God intends it. What a gift to be born from above. Let's pray. Lord, we are so glad today to be here. It's not just our habit to come to worship. It's a joy. It's a response to your love. It's a desire to dig deeper. Lord, we want to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church right now. We want to be those who have believed and received you so that our lives are wonderfully changed, so that we can say with confidence, I've been newborn. I've been redeemed. All my life has been rearranged. Thank you. Thank you for the shed blood of Jesus that washes away sins, that writes our names in the book of life, that gives us the gift of your Holy Spirit. I pray that experience is real in each of our lives. Every boy, every girl, every mom and dad, every grandparent, each one that you died for. I pray it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. We're going to sing, Oh, Happy Day. I hope that day is real in your life. If it isn't, I hope today will be that day. You can remain seated as we sing together. Oh, happy day that fixed my choice on thee my savior and my god well may this glowing heart rejoice and tell its raptures all abroad happy day happy day when jesus washed my sins away he taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Oh, happy bond that seals my vows to him who merits all my love. Let cheerful man for his house while to that same shrine I move. Happy day, happy day, 
When Jesus washed my sins away, he taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoy, sing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. It's done the great, transactions done. I am the Lord's and He is mine. He drew me and I followed on. John to confess the voice divine. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Now rest my long divided heart fixed on this blissful center rest. Here have I found a nobler part, yeah, heavenly pleasures fill my breast. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray, and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. that heard the solemn vow that vow renewed shall daily hear till in life's latest hour I bow and blessing death upon so dear happy day happy day when Jesus washed my sins away he taught me how to watch and pray Joy, sing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. It is my sincere hope and belief that Nicodemus is going to be with us on the other side because Jesus got real serious with him. Maybe he said, hey, Jesus, don't blow my hair back with all of this born again stuff or born from above stuff. You're going too fast. You're coming on too strong. Or maybe he said, ah, oh, that's just what I needed. I've been looking. I've been struggling. I've been studying. And still I don't feel right with God. I'm chasing the proverbial carrot all around me and I can't get a hold of it but after Jesus was done I think the penny dropped and Nicodemus knew what he needed and I for one believe he took Jesus at his word and received the forgiveness that Jesus brings and I hope you will too your husband your wife your kids your parents they can't do it for you you and I must receive him you and I must surrender to him you and I must allow him to give us new birth. I hope that's happened. If it hasn't, please take care of that today. And if I can help or anyone else here can help in any small way, we stand ready to help you. It is our hope and prayer that every one of us who call Victory Memorial their spiritual home will have the birth from above and all it brings to each one of us. We're going to prepare ourselves for intercession. We're going to sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus as we pray for the needs of others. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the thing of earth will grow strange lead him in the light of his glory and grace turn your eyes upon Jesus look full in his 
Anyone who would like to come forward and kneel with me around the chancel rail, please feel free to do so. Nothing extra special about kneeling. We just do it as a sign of our own repentance and humility as we kneel before God. I uh, helped a couple in their 60s who had found each other after they'd both lost their partner, their life partner, they found each other and I counseled them and officiated at their wedding and I remember them saying to me a couple of months later, Pastor, you know how wonderful it is each morning we kneel beside the bed together after we have made the bed together and we pray. We thank God for giving us each other. We thank God for our new lives together. We thank God for the the relationship we share with him and with each other. That picture has stayed in my mind, kneeling before God, thanking God, that's why we do it. But it's just as important as sacred as sitting there in your pew or driving in your car or walking around the lake as we visit with God. Lord, there's nothing we can do that can save us. We can't do it on our own. No matter how hard we try, no matter how well educated we are, no matter how influential or wealthy. Here's Nicodemus, he was certainly one of the elite Hebrews in Jerusalem. But he didn't know you in a deep and personal way. And Jesus helped him find that. And I pray you'll help us find that too that no matter what we've accomplished to date, it's not enough until we receive you as Savior and Lord of our lives, until we learn to walk with you and listen to your voice and allow you to teach us how to be new men and new women that only you can make. We pray today for those among us who have special needs. Thank you that Buster Talbot's tests turned out negative that he doesn't have bone cancer even though they want to do further tests continue to help him and heal him and bless him I pray that you'll be his comfort and strength as I've prayed for him each and every day of this past week worried with him that maybe the dreaded cancer had shown up in his life I pray for my sister-in-law Connie who's had a recurrence of cancer in her breasts as they've got to go in maybe and do biopsies and, and maybe they've got to go and do lumpectomies and all of that. I pray for your peace, your comfort, your healing. I pray for Shara Dawn and Robin and Charity. I pray for Tiffany. I pray for Leanne. Lord, we've just got a long list of people who've been fighting cancers. My friend Jack who had his kidney removed. Be with all of these who are fighting for their lives. I pray for more than just physical healing. I pray for a sense of your presence and power at work in them. Be with Ginevra, who was very sick this past week and now has woken up and doing better. Be with Ginevra Powell. We wrap her up in love and prayers. So good to see Miss Patsy with us again. Continue to help her and heal her and bless her as she fights renal failure. We pray for Robert Henson as he deals with this autoimmune disease that has so restricted him and given him a lot of pain and weakness. We just wrap him up in love and prayers. We pray for Marlene and all the family that you'll bless them and help them as they care for him. Lord, I thank you that Phyllis Claycomb is at the manor and doing well. She was so happy to see me as we visited and prayed together, came to worship the next day. We wrap our beloved Phyllis up in our love and prayers. Be with Jerry Rhodes as he's in hospice care over there in that rest home. 
I pray that you would watch over him and Anna Marie. Also for Vicky Howard as she's in hospice care, preparing herself to die. Be right there with her in her struggle as she makes her victory lap. For those who are going through pain of divorce, who are dealing with addictions, for those who are struggling financially or are facing difficult situations, I pray, O oh God, for your help, for your guidance, for your deliverance. And I pray especially to, today for those who aren't born from above, who are still lost in their sin and darkness. Speak to them, convict them. We stand ready to help in any way. We are so glad for the gift of new life as we join our voices and pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to watch a YouTube video, Cry Out to Jesus by Third Day. It's a, a beautiful sharing of the the gospel, I pray that you would sense God's voice speaking to you, comforting you, challenging you as we listen to this together. And with me and receive God's blessing and God's challenge as you leave worship and go into your mission field that God has called you and me to be a part of. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. Now may the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.